always remember sitting in like the waiting room while my parents were like meeting with their clients. And then, you know, they'd show them these, this photography and like seeing their work come to life and like their creative abilities come to life and, and watching people be so mesmerized and like life changed by like your creativity and your art that really inspired me. And so when I knew that I was a creative person and I had these abilities to design and I knew that I can do that in a way, you know, to help someone's business, um, flourish to help them make more money, to help them stand apart, to help them attract a, like the right audience, to help them really make their business easier. Came up from the bottom to the top. To the top. Hey. And the young is gonna never stop. Never stop. Hey. And he always punching in the clock. In the clock. Hey. In the clock. In the clock. Hey. All right. Well, I have always been a creative person. I was actually born into a family of creatives. My parents were photographers. So I grew up in an entrepreneurial family. They had their own business. And I really saw firsthand what it was like to build my own business that way. Um, and so growing up and through like school, I always knew I was creative and I always knew I wanted to, um, you know, use my design and creative abilities. So I went to university for design and I graduated with a BF, BFA in visual communications and design. And from there, I went and worked in corporate America. Um, I worked in and out of marketing agencies, in and out of New York and New York City and Connecticut. Um, I worked with globally recognized brands. I'm sure some of you recognize them, um, like Captain Morgan, Absolute Vodka, uh, Godiva Chocolate, Bailey's Irish Cream, Jameson, like so many Trojan, like so many cool brands. And um, I did that for about six years. And then I started getting the itch to want to like fulfill my entrepreneurial journey. I, I always knew I wanted to own my own business at some point. I always knew I wanted to be my own boss, my own CEO, have my own agency. And after about six years, I decided it was time. Um, and so then that's what pushed me into building my agency. It's called The Creative Co. And our strategy with The Creative Co. was always to have, so I worked with multi-million dollar brands and I always wanted to bring that aspect down to the business owner, like the hometown business owner who, you know, doesn't have that multi-million dollar budget to spend per se just yet. Some do, some, some that we work with do, but um, most are, you know, um, either getting started or, you know, want to revamp their business and, and really take it to the next level and really stand out and become the most attractive choice. And so I wanted to take that multi-million dollar branding um, experience and bring it to the business owner. So I could feel like I had like more one-on-one -on -one impact with that type of a, a, a person, like a business owner, as opposed to just being, you know, like another designer at another agency in another cubicle type feel. So I have felt so fulfilled after doing that. I've been doing this now for almost six years now. And um, yeah, it's been amazing. So we have a team of designers, uh, uh, web designers, copywriters, photographers, videographers. Um, and now we help entrepreneurs and business owners to build brands that stand apart. So that's like everything that includes like, you know, uh, everything from brand identities, like logos and color schemes and font pairings to website designs, to advertising uh, material, marketing material, um, photog photo shoots and, and video shoots as well. So that's, that's sort of my st story in a nutshell. <laughs> oh, nice. So what, so what was it that actually made you get into the industry that you're in? I mean, yeah. was it was it something on the backside, on, on like in originally, beforehand? So I always knew that I was a creative person. It was just something that was like in innate within me. It was, it's like sort of in my bones. I was always <laughs> like styling for my friends, and then um, you know putting together like color schemes and mood boards. And like I said, I was born into an entrepreneurial family of photographers. So I was always in a studio in front of a camera, behind a camera, learning how to operate ca cameras and, and create productions. And so I think a part of that was my upbringing, just like being a part of that creative space. 
Um, but then once I went to university for design, I really realized the impact that I, you know, I, I think my parents were a big inspiration because growing up and seeing them help people in a creative way and seeing the satisfaction that comes from their clients. Like I always remember sitting in like the waiting room while my parents were like meeting with their clients. And then, you know, they'd show them these, this photography and like seeing their work come to life and like their creative abilities come to life and, and watching people be so mesmerized and like life changed by like, your creativity and your art that really inspired me and so when i knew that i was a creative person and i had these abilities to design and i knew that i can do that in a way you know to help someone's business um flourish to help them make more money to help them stand apart to help them attract a, like the right audience to help them really make their business easier um i just i was so inspired by that and i knew that i wanted to have that same effect with business owners like i wanted you know, now it's it's amazing. Like I get to see sometimes like I work with business owners and when we're done with the final product, it's like we go from nothing, zero to having this like amazing blown out brand identity that helps them to sell and like helps them to make money easier. And just to see the reactions on their faces are just like so fulfilling to me. So it's just inspiring and I, I love what I do. And yeah, I think so. I think like that's what really inspires me every day and like what inspired me to get into that. Okay. What would you say your biggest challenge is? I think, you know, there's always there's always challenges in like different aspects. Like there's it, it, there's different things. Like so sometimes, you know, building a team was really hard to do in the beginning because, you know, finding the right people that like can mesh together and um have the type of eye that you need them to have and, and have the quality that you need them to have and, um, you know, the work ethic. And so it's really hard to find people, um, you know, sometimes that, that live up to your expectations that way. So it was really hard for me in the beginning to build a team, but once I found like a star players, I like would do anything to keep them around. So now I have this team of amazing um, you know, all, all different types of players, like photogra photographers and videographers and, and designers. And as soon as I found the right ones, I just kept them. And it was, it was, um, so that was a little challenging in the beginning, but now it's, it, it's worked out. And so sort of like, you know, keeping your standards high, um, in business, it's, it's hard to do because sometimes it's easier to just sort of, you know, do things the half-assed way, or, you know, especially in the design, in the design world, it's so easy to just, you know, kind of hire just anyone or like, you know, I just need a logo and they can just slap it together. But really you need someone who understands the strategy and the psychology behind what they're doing and, and at a fundamental level, because that's what makes things like so much more above and beyond and really makes you stand out. And so to find people who have that same um, ambition and like same quality to their work um, is super important to me. So that was a challenge, but we've worked through it. We're always working through it and we've, we've got an amazing team now. So I'm super lucky for that. I mean, you've been at, you said you've been at um, Creative Co has been going for the last six years. I mean, where, where do you see yourself heading to? I mean, you know, some people say sky's the limit, but I mean, where, where do you see yourself going? Where do you want to go to? Well, I see lots of different things. I love what I do currently. And so I want to definitely keep that up with working with entrepreneurs and business owners who are trying to build their, their brands and who really want to stand out um, and become the most attractive business within their industry. I love doing what we do. Um, in the future, though, I do see myself um, trying to incorporate a little bit more coaching work because I... I love working with designers as well, um, working with newbie designers who, um, you know, we've been able, we've been blessed and able to build this business um, from the ground level up. And in the beginning, it was so hard to do on my own. I was all by myself. I had no idea what running a business was like. Like I said, I came from a corporate, the corporate world. So I was an employee. I didn't know what it was like to build an agency, to build a business. And so over the six years, I've learned so, so much. And I would love, love, love to be able to give that back to all that knowledge back to designers um, as much as possible. So, um, you know, as much as I love working with business owners and entrepreneurs, and I, I want to continue doing that, I also want to help designers to build their own businesses as well, um, especially in the design field, obviously, to 
you know, to teach them the ways and help them because I remember how much of a struggle it was for me. And I don't, it, it doesn't need to take six years um, when someone has the knowledge and can kind of give it to you at this point. So it's so fulfilling to be able to help others build their businesses as well. What can you, what can you suggest to these guys? I mean, yeah. from someone coming from never ever experiencing this sort of environment to getting into it. I think the biggest thing for me was discipline. Like when you become a business owner, you really have so much freedom at your fingertips. Like you are free to create your own schedule. You're free to pick and choose your own clients. You're free to pick and choose your own projects. Um, you don't have anyone like looming over you anymore, telling you what to say and do and, and how to act and what to do anymore. So having the discipline to really, um, you know, the work ethic, like, you know, how, 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 how many hours do you want to put into work every day and really being disciplined to, to sticking to that, um, to making sure you hit projects on like deadlines on time to making sure you're fulfilling, you know, client needs and going above and beyond and really standing apart. I think like having that discipline helps you to really stand apart because so many businesses, I think so, that's why so many business businesses fail and so many business owners don't see beyond three to five years anymore because they don't have the business, the the discipline to really make themselves stand apart from the rest. They're just sort of, you know, floating by. And I think if you have the discipline to like really go above and beyond and, and really put yourself out there and make sure your customer satisfaction is on point and make sure you're happy, you're feeling fulfilled, make sure, you know, your energy is aligned and in the right space when you're going above and beyond like that, you will stand out and you will last the, te the, the test of time. Um, so yeah, just really being passionate about what you do and really just giving it your all. Um, if, you know, if it's not something that you love doing, you're just doing it just to do it. You're going to, you're going to see that it, you know, work sort of becomes like a chore. Um, yeah. But when you're doing it because you love it and you live, breathe, eat, sleep, and you just can't get enough of what you do, it shows and that energy really will magnetize the right audience, the right clients to you, and it'll make you so much more successful. So really just stay in your zone of genius, do what you love doing, hire other people to do the things you don't love doing um, so that you can really stay aligned and focused and energized. And when you're feeling inspired like that, your clients will feel it and you'll feel success in your business. How do you deal with the down times? How do you deal with the, the times where things aren't going so well? That's a really good question because it's so easy as entrepreneurs to feel like you're on an, like an, a roller coaster that's just going up and down constantly. Um, in the beginning, I had a really hard time with this because I felt like I was all by myself and I'm like, why is this happening to me? And I was, I sort of played the victim a lot. Like I was like, is this just, does this just happen to me? Like, what am I doing wrong? What, what do I need to do better? And, um, eventually over time, I realized that this is just normal part of entrepreneurship. It's not every single person goes through this as an entrepreneur. And so I started to see the beauty in the, 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 the valleys. So every time, you know, I'd have peaks and I'd be thankful for those, but I'd know that valleys were coming. And that means that, that all that means is growth. Growth is coming. Um, so to see it in a positive way, as opposed to a negative way, um, knowing that it's going to happen, knowing it's, it's, you can't fight it. And, um, just to see the learning opportunities in the valleys. So, um, yeah, I mean, I've been able to really just, you know, take it in and see the beauty in it because there's, you know, even if there's times when you're struggling, there's, there's lessons in that, that you can, you can take and you can, um, you know, use to grow from. So just know that it happens to everybody. You can't, you can't avoid it. Um, you're not alone. And, you know, I, something I did was I hire, I always hire mentors and, and coaches. I always have a coach and a, and a mentor, someone who's doing what I see myself doing in, you know, three to five years from now. And I'm always looking to the future. And so it's always nice to have 
you know, someone in your corner where when you're feeling alone or scared or nervous, or you just don't know what's going on or how to fix it, just sort of to look to someone who has been there before, been there, done that, and can sort of help you through that. That's been really helpful for me. So hiring coaches, hiring mentors, and just staying positive. No, I noticed you said you come back from a corporate world. I mean, going from an employee to an entrepreneur or a business owner, I mean, that would have been a huge, huge change in the way you look at things, wouldn't it? Yeah, I mean, I like in corporate America, you know, I sort of felt like I had this three by three cubicle and I was just another person on the team. I didn't feel like I love, I loved what I did, but I just sort of felt like another number. And when I made the transition to entrepreneurship, I was really able to work with business owners one-on-one -on -one and really see the impact that I had in their lives. And I just, it just felt so much more fulfilling. Um, so that fulfillment is what inspired me to get through all the hurdles. You know, like in the beginning, there were, there were many hurdles, like how are we going to price things? What do we, what do we price things at? Um, what do we include in services? Um, what works, what doesn't work? Um, you know, processes of like, you know, having to create all your processes, like how to email people, when to email people, what to say, um, you know, when to send the invoice, when not to do something. It's all these little things you figure out along the way. And it feels like, you know, in the moment, it could feel like so much um, of a struggle because you're just like sort of on your own. But again, when you, when you, you know, trial and error learning, you learn as you go and you see the beauty in that. And then, yeah, hiring people um, like coaches and consultants that could help you along the way um, yep. to really make it easier. So, yeah, it's a, it's definitely a different perspective. Like you go from, you know, someone sort of telling you what to do all day versus you deciding what you do all day. And so again, that's where that discipline comes in. You sort of have to really be structured make sure that you get that right. Well, as an entrepreneur, and I, you've maybe, you might have kind of touched on these a little bit as you've been, as you've uh, been talking about some of your experiences, but as an entrepreneur, what is the, uh, what is the best experience that you've had thus far? And what is the worst experience you've had thus far? And what are the lessons that you've learned from those two experiences that you'll continue to carry and apply? Okay. Um, I'm going to start with the worst experience first we'll go negative first so wow. once i had a client who and this is something that you might encounter if you work in the online space if you're taking payments via online and processing um so i had a client we did a huge project for him and he was a very horrible client obviously i didn't see it coming in the beginning. So gracious, so nice. Everything was great. He loved what we did. So many praises. And thankfully I had, I had copies of all of his praises and all of his, you know, happiness. Um, but in the end, when it came time for him to pay his final remain remainder, he, he processed a chargeback. Now, I don't know if any of you have ever done have, have ever experienced chargebacks. Um, this is something I would warn against <laughs> um, using Stripe. And um, he claimed that he never knew us. He claimed that we never did any work for him and that he had no idea who we were, why we were taking payment processes at all. And um, it was a huge chunk of money. I think it was upwards of like $10,000 that he just it just came right out of my bank account. And we, we were just like flabbergasted, like how could anyone do this to us? And we were so upset and so distraught. Um, so that was probably one of the worst experiences in business, just doing business online, not knowing how to handle like online process processors. So what we did now, we implement a service, um, like we implemented on our contracts that, you know, there's a sign, there's a signature portion now that you have to acknowledge. This is the final payment that you have to acknowledge your address, that you have to acknowledge your full name. You have to acknowledge all of these things so that you can't, no, you can no longer do that. Um, so we had to learn the hard way, but that was something that now really helps us moving forward with making sure that our clients understand our processes and make sure they understand how to, you know, process payment and all that. So that was definitely a shocker, but it was, um, a, a definitely a, a nice learning opportunity. Um, that was the negative, <laughs> the positive, one of the best things that's happened to me. I think the best thing, one of the best feelings in business was when we first 
the first time ever selling one of our high ticket offers. Um, so we have a high ticket offer and I was so hesitant to do this in the beginning and, and to really build out, I built out this entire offer that I, I really loved and I knew would help so many people. Um, and it was, up, I, I think we started at $25,000 at the time. And I was really nervous, like, will anyone purchase this? Will anyone bite? And eventually we sold it. And the first time we sold it was like one of the most rewarding feelings. Cause I was like, you know, people see our, they see our vision. They, they can, they feel, um, you know, like they can trust us with all of this. And it just felt so rewarding and so amazing to be able to really have that high ticket um, offer come in. So that was, you know, building out a high ticket offer in our business was life-changing. I would definitely recommend that to any of you um, who are building a business, have something that sort of, you know, the way I went about creating my high ticket offers, putting every single thing into this package that I would want my client to have. Um, so for us, that included a brand identity, a, a brand website, a brand photo shoot, and a brand video shoot. And um, I knew that that would be life changing and so helpful. Um, so again, when we sold that for the first time, it was awesome. It's like one of the best feelings in the business. What's, what has helped you to kind of like hire better people, I, I guess? It's really hard because sometimes you, you, it's so easy to have emotional connections with people. And it's so easy to like keep people around simply because you just sort of, you feel for them and you want to help them. And I've always been a believer of just really leaning into my intuition and my gut feelings. So I know that that's really not the best answer for you. There's not like a technical, like I don't have like a technical way of answering that. It's more of just like really leaning into my gut and my intuition and knowing deep down inside, like, is this right? Or is this wrong? Like, am I doing this for the right reasons? Or am I doing this for emotional reasons? And, um, you know, if I see the potential in being able to train someone and get them to the point where I need them to be, I will definitely put in the work um, because I, I know that it's much like, it's so much harder to come across people who um, like you can emotionally connect with. And I, I think that if you find someone that you really bond with and that, you know, has the potential, it's just, for me, it's more of an investment in the right direction to just invest the time into really getting them to where I need them to be um, and having belief and faith in them. Um, because I know in the beginning, you know, nobody, we don't, we're all, we're all just trying to figure things out. Nobody knows, you know, what, what we're really doing in the end. We're all really just, is this just a game of like trial and error? So you have to be like lenient with some people and just, you know, help them get through it. If you have that intuition, though, and that feeling that you love them, but it's just really not going to work and you really just feel that in your gut, then you can just, you know, maybe either um, they're better for another position and you sort of put them in and like have them do something else that maybe they'd be better at. Um, or, yeah, you just sort of have to cut ties because at the end of the day, business is about making money. And if you're wasting money, if you're not, you know, if you're if you're using money in the wrong way for the wrong causes, then it's just going to impact you overall. And that's going to affect your energy. That's going to affect your alignment with your clients. So it's just going to end up hurting you in the end. So again, it's just an intuition and gut feeling. So how do you, how do you keep your people happy? The ones that you actually feel like, okay, these are worth my time. These are worth my money. How do you incentivize to keeping them for a long time? Yeah, I mean, incentives like come with, you know, doing, you know, for us, like if, if, a, if one of our designers or photographers does things in an extraordinary way, we always make sure to give them a little bit of a kickback, a nice bonus, some time off, send them things in the mail, um, really help them to feel rewarded. Um, because I think that that's really important to, you know, we all need positive feedback in our lives as, as well as negative feedback. I think the opposite is equally important. Like if you're not feeling that you guys are aligned and you're not feeling like, you know, things are going smoothly, you have to have that conversation. It's ultimately your responsibility. You can't blame them at the end of the day. It's your responsibility because you're keeping them around. So if the numbers aren't showing growth, 
in your business, then you have to have that conversation with them and you have to take the responsibility. Um, I, again, I think all different people, people do this differently depending on, you know, how you decide to run your business. I'm one for giving like second chances. I normally don't give third chances. Like if, if like, I'll give you a first chance, I'll give you a second chance, but like the third chance, that's pretty much where I, I cut things off. Usually I don't have, I haven't had too many of these issues just because I tend to be really rigorous in my process in the beginning, like um, my, my interviewing process and my, um, you know, uh, like testing phases. So like I make sure to, in the beginning, um, you know, give them prompts, give them um, projects, give them things that to, to, to test and prove themselves before I even hire full-time. Um, and that has saved me a ton of time and effort and work. Um, I don't normally ever really hire like right off the bat unless I've like personally worked with them before. Um, so that can be really helpful. Um, but yeah, if they're not, you know, if they're not performing to your standards, again, it's your responsibility to, you have to do something about it. Otherwise your business is going to take a toll and your energy is going to take a toll. And that's just, it's not going to be good for growth. What would be your advice for people that are low in discipline or that want to, you know, be disciplined? Cause you know, it, it's very hard to just say, oh, I'm going to do it. And then you just start doing it. Right. I don't think it yeah. happens that way. So what's, what's a good trick or what's a good uh, thing that, that you kind of got into to like have good discipline in the beginning I was trying to do everything on my own and that was what got me into trouble I would um promise things that I really didn't want to do and then I would do it sort of half-assed and then I would hate myself after because I'm like oh this isn't the best I could do and I I didn't love it so I really had to get clear after about like a year to two years into the business, I really got clear with myself with like, and, and like really went inside and, and found my truths. Like, what do I love doing? And what do I not love doing? And I really had to become clear about these things because I noticed when I was doing things that I didn't love doing, I was not, <laughs> I wasn't disciplined in them. I, I wasn't, I wasn't doing them to my best ability. Um, and with the things that I did love doing, I was like, putting more effort and time into doing them to like procrastinate all the things I didn't need to, didn't want to be doing. So I just had to get really clear with myself, like, where's my zone of genius? What do I love doing the most? And just stick with that and hire out for everybody else, everything else, all the other responsibilities. And I know that in the beginning, that can be really tough because obviously hiring, you need to have the cash flow, And I understand that. Um, but you can start off with like really small tasks. And nowadays there's so many different, you know, agencies, companies that can help with like assistance, um, like, ha like hiring an assistant to do things or um, little tasks and, in and ins and outs um, of like the business that things that you just don't really, you aren't passionate about. Um, so I would say just get really clear about what you want to focus on because you're going to do that with so much more vigor and strength and like excitement and um, figure out what you really don't enjoy doing and see if you can find support in those areas. Like whether that's hiring someone or, um, you know, having someone come in as a freelancer and having them support you um, because it's going to make all the difference um, to your mental state. I really just do think that like, you know, being aligned with your energy and being positive is all about um, you know, it's just, it's feeling that alignment in, in your business is what's going to help you to continue to, you know, have the energy and the like motivation to keep going to really help your clients. So it's important that you stay balanced. And when you're doing things you hate doing, you're just, your clients are going to feel it. Your family's going to feel it. You're going to feel it. And when you get exhausted and burnt out, you don't have a, you can't have the, the type of business that you, you want to have. So um, yeah, it's just being really truthful with yourself and getting really clear about, you know, what you love and what you don't love and then hiring for the rest. Is it even worth it right now for me to hire someone to make videos? Cause I mean, I've been looking into it, but I'm like, I don't know if I, you know, if I'm posting two videos or three videos, like, I don't, I don't, I don't even know what my budget would be for me to start getting money since I don't have any cash flow, And, you know, and this is not something that, um, 
is something that I just like doing. So is, would it even be worth me kind of hiring someone um, right now that I just started uh, to do my editing or should I start doing my editing first until I get like a following and then start paying for videos or what yeah. would you recommend? That's a really good question. And actually it's a really good point that I neglected to bring up in terms of hiring um, because that is true in the beginning. I always made sure, I, I know I said that I, I, I did everything in the beginning. Um, and as much as I didn't enjoy doing that and I realized there were things I really shouldn't be doing, I at least learned every task. Like I learned what it took to create every task by have by being forced to do that. I knew, you know, like in your in your terms, I knew what it would take to have to edit a video, how long that would take, what I would need, what would be required, the B-roll, the the other types of, you know, the types of videos that you would need, the the audio, how to put it together. So when it came time to decide like do I love doing this or do I hate doing this? I knew, you know, you know, maybe this is the job for someone else, but I knew it was required of them. And that helped me really like um, formulate, you know, how much should this be costing me? How many people do I need to hire? So the more you can do things on your own in the beginning, as much as it is difficult and <laughs> it's a learning process, like you, you are learning the entire time, like what goes into something. Um, and until it does become profitable, it doesn't make any sense to hire people. So do it until it becomes profitable. And then once you're profitable and you feel like you have enough cash flow to start to uh, hand that off to others, then you can do that. Hmm. Um, I would recommend, um, you know, yeah, do it on your own for a little while. As soon as you start to do some call to actions in your videos, you start to see them become profitable. As, as soon as you start to see them converting and really bringing you clients, then you can decide if you want to continue doing that or you want to hire out. Yeah, but but become profitable before before you do that. Guys, what is up? It's your boy, Mike Barron. Thank you for checking out the channel go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you don't, I'm gonna come through this computer screen and close you up my damn self. Let's go, I'll see you at the top.